The world didn't know it yet, but it was the dawn of the First World War. Time is a ticking bomb, the Industrial Revolution did not lead to a bright future, the fruits of the new era, are only for the privileged, and the workers are excluded. Those are the times of homo homini lupus, man is wolf to man. There is no place left in the heart of the oppressed for the beautiful art of the Impressionists. The realism was already half forgotten, and all the other movements were not harsh and raw enough to show the deep abyss of anxiety and despair, growing in the human soul. The howls of the disturbed were already painted by Vincent van Gogh, Edvard Munch, and James Ensor. The first one opened the eyes of the viewers to the melancholy at the end of his life in his sunflowers, then the paths of madness, leading to self-destruction and his hope for redemption in art. The second one portrayed the scream of nature, surrounded by bloody red sky, where all the fears of humanity are collected in one gaze, while the last one early abandoned all hope for mankind, slowly losing its values and degenerating. The new expressionists were leaning away from a realistic representation and were searching for a depiction of the emotional and psychological states of their minds. Heavily inspired by the symbolist, exploring grotesque dreams and visions and keeping some of the painting techniques of the post-impressionists, expressionists used vibrant colors, complementary harmonies, gestural brush strokes, and jagged forms. They used heavy contouring influenced by Matisse, extreme value contrasts, deformed and elongated figures, taken from Klimt, and faces with cold gases, long lines and unnatural colors, which also can be found in Ensor and Picasso. The structure of those dehumanized faces can be tracked to the African masks, leaving today's viewer in thought for the wild and unpredictable nature of the human. Is it a beast, running away from its culture and religion, or is it a godlike creature, that creates new mechanical worlds, where human life has no price? The roots of Expressionism were ready to spread when the first main groups, De Bruque or The Bridge, formed in Dresden in 1905. Founding members were Fritz Blail, Eric Heckel, Ernst Ludwig Kirchner, and Karl Schmidt Rotluf. Rotluf studied architecture in Dresden, where he met the other members of the group. The name Brucker was intended to symbolize the link or bridge they would form with the art of the future. The group was differentiating from the academists and the naturalists, for a period of time critics were using the same label expressionism for the works of the contemporary French group of the Fauves, linking cubism, orphism, and even futurism to the movement. Today, the groups are rightfully distinguished, but while the avant-garde was forming its ideas, the borders between them were interpreted differently. The bridge, establishing their identity, published a manifesto in 1906, that stated we want to achieve freedom of life, and action against the well-established older forces. They did not follow strict theory in creating their art, but the strong colors and fearful way of layering the paint became recognizable. Emil Nolder, Otto Müller, and Max Pechstein became part of the group around the time of moving the core of the bridge from Dresden to Berlin. Emil Nolder, who was a Nazi supporter was marked by Hitler himself as a degenerate artist, along with all avant-garde artists. The group is described as true bohemians, painting and sketching during evening gatherings, using local girls as models, and creating more connections with the working class, where they found more inspiration. Their experiments with woodcut printing became emblematic for the group, 
Other distinguishing characteristics of the way they treated form and the color were the massive contouring in darker colors in contrast to raw or unnatural hues of the objects, deformed face features and sharp edges in the depiction of the bodies. Scenes and crowds from the city alongside the nude female body were light motives. The street passers have long silhouettes, their faces are painted like they are performers from a theater, and they want to be seen. In the atelier or alone at home, they are more relaxed. The female figures are often open to the viewers, with a lack of coquetry, directly gazing at us or exposing calmly their backs. Melancholic, nor shy or playful. Deshtam, or The Storm, founded by Howarth Walden, became one of the leading avant-garde art and literary magazine that defended the new expressionism movement. The magazine was a meeting point for the ideas of the French and German expressionists that remained even after the First World War. It was also one of the few places, where art created by women was tolerated. While the main group of the bridge is active in Berlin, in 1911 in Munich Vasily Kandinsky and Franz Mark were preparing Der Blauer Reiter or the Blue Rider Almanac. It was published a year later and contained reproductions of more than 140 artworks, and 14 major articles. Among the works of Van Gogh, Cezanne, Gauguin, and Henri Rousseau, pieces with primitive and folk art origins, there were also selected 13 pieces from children. It was one of the first so-called total works of art, containing visual art, music, and design. The title of the group is falsely associated with a painting that Kandinsky created in 1903 because he changed its name later. The origin of the Blue Rider comes from Franz Marc's idea to portray different states of mind using animals in bright colors, combined with Kandinsky's theory, that blue is the color of the longing for purity and human spirituality. The themes of spiritual awakening and rebirth were deeply connected to their art. The group was interested in the coherence between visual art and music, finding inspiration in primitive art and leaning more and more toward abstraction, under the influence of other groups like Cubists and Fauvists. The Blue Riders adopted some of their ideas, but their desire to express the spiritual world through colors and symbols dominated over the purely scientific approach in choosing the right gamut or composition. Based in Germany, the group was forced to its dissolution by the First War actions. Franz Mark and August Mack were killed, and Kandinsky and the other major figures left Germany and formed another group called the Blue Four about ten years later. The new group was mainly organized by the art dealer Galkashire, who found a way to exhibit and promote their art in the United States. During the war, there were no solid groups associated with the Expressionism movement, but some vivid art pieces, depicting the emotional effect of the war horrors and social degradation followed the idea of the representation of the inner emotional world. The darker visions of the human soul haunted the minds of the artists during and after the war, and the idea of the ascension of the spirit became weaker. The hypersexualization, the expressions of madness, and loneliness became the new leading themes. The works of artists like Haim Soutin, and Australian expressionists like Oscar Kokoschka and Egon Schiele formed an image of the dehumanized mankind after the war, filled with inner pain and constant disturbance. The artists associated with Expressionism who painted during and after the First and Second World War did not form now bigger groups, but a lot of them found their way to the United States and influenced the art scene, where abstract Expressionism, and its contrary action the figurative Expressionism were born. 
The expressionist movement is widely reflected in other art forms such as dance, cinema, and theater. In dance, the idea of the act on the scene as a form of art, not only entertainment, and a mixture of metaphysical ideas was the root of the expressionistic dance method. In cinema, it manifested as extreme anti-realism, and depiction of deeply psychological states of mind. German Expressionist cinema is widely reflected in horror films and film noir, some of its iconic images and techniques are still exploited today. The exact nature of the Expressionism movement remains hard to be defined because of the abundance of movements that appeared in the modernist period, with some overlapping ideas or others rejecting one another, they all reflect on each other giving every next wave of artists food for thought. If you like our content, please hit the notification bell and stay with us for more.